الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters some people reject the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Some people reject the hadith. If we reject the hadith, we will not be able to achieve contentment because we won't be able to practice Islam. Islam has been brought to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the source of everything. The revelation that came to us is divided into two. One, the verses that were recited that are words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two, the detailed explanations, the words of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to follow. Let's listen to this beautiful verse of Surah An-Nisa, verse number 65. <laughs> Nay, they are not considered true believers until they make you and your decision final regarding the disputes between them. And later, they don't feel any narrowness of their hearts regarding that particular decision. What this means is, whatever disputes we have, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his decision is final. This verse is one of the verses that all the scholars mention when it comes to hujjiyah to sunnah, which means the validity of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The fact that we must adopt what the messenger has said. If he has said something and declared something, it is considered a declaration for me too. So. The Prophet Sallallahu decision and what he has said regarding disputes between the people of the Ummah, that is final. You're not supposed to feel in your heart any narrowness regarding that decision. That is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says. So my brothers and sisters, those who don't accept the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu his statements, his words and his teachings, they cannot call themselves Muslim because they haven't believed in the second part of the Shahada. The first part is Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I bear witness there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. The second part is wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. How can we say that we are Muslimin when we haven't accepted the statements of the messenger who is the messenger of Islam? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you're looking for contentment, you must definitely adopt what the Prophet peace be upon him has said. So this is a very important verse that I started with today and I continue to another verse with a similar meaning. Verse number 80, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whoever has followed the messenger has definitely followed Allah. How's that? Subhanallah. You want contentment? Follow the messenger, peace be upon him. His way, his style, his habits, and whatever he has brought to us in terms of teachings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. And this is why to achieve contentment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how important it is to ponder over the verses of the Qur'an. Let's admit, many of us are guilty of reading the Qur'an without understanding it. As much as we will get a reward for every letter that we do read, even if it is without understanding, there is an equivalent reward, if not greater, to actually understand the Qur'an, put it into practice and teach it to others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a greater reward. Contentment is definitely achieved by recitation of the Qur'an without a doubt. Greater contentment is achieved by trying to understand what is meant by the Qur'an, putting it into practice and conveying it to others. Your right and my right regarding the Qur'an is not only for us to recite its verses. In the month of Ramadan, how many of us read the Qur'an and we've recited it and we cover from cover to cover. We have actually read it so much, but how many of us have actually gone into its meanings, put them into practice, conveyed them to others, learned and got the answers of questions that we might have found while we were reading. 
We got the answers from the experts. How many of us have done that? If you are to spend time with the Quran, you will achieve contentment. The Quran is the word of the owner of contentment. If you'd like contentment, you definitely have to study that word. You have to recite it. You have to listen to it as well. Listen with concentration. If you listen with concentration, you will achieve so much more than you imagine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Verse number 82, Allah says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ are they not going to consider deeply and study deeply the verses of the Quran? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us contentment. Thereafter, verse number 86 of the same surah, Surah An-Nisa, Allah teaches us how to achieve contentment in another beautiful way. Interactions with one another. The first point of interaction is supposed to be a greeting. Listen to what Allah says. وَإِذَا حُيِّيتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَسِيبًا When you are greeted with a greeting, then respond with a better greeting or at least reply it with an equal greeting. For indeed, Allah takes account of everything. How beautiful is that? The importance of greeting Greet in a better way. If someone has greeted you in a lousy way, perhaps they may not have been concentrating, you know, they may not have greeted you properly. If you greet back in a better way, the chances of you being content far greater because you have a clean heart. If someone just said, Assalamu alaikum, and you said, Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, doesn't it show genuineness? Doesn't it show a clean heart? But if someone were to say, Assalamu alaikum, and you didn't even reply, it is sinful. Secondly, the one who commences with the greeting is actually free from pride. He will have greater contentment. What are you losing by greeting people? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Yes, some people are toxic. When they are toxic and they have harmed you and they continue to harm you, you may want to just greet them and that's it. No extra discussion. But the greeting is something you should not avoid or you should not stay away from. Learn to greet and learn to respond to the greeting in an even better way if you are greeted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us contentment and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. Then I move on to verse number 112 of the same surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the various levels of sin. If you'd like contentment, don't ever accuse someone else of a sin they haven't committed. If you do that, you will lose contentment and you may even lose the hereafter completely. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 112, Whoever has earned a sin and then accuses someone who is innocent of the sin, they've thrown it onto them. Allah says they have indeed engaged in a huge slander and a grave sin, a grave sin. A clear sin. May Allah protect us. One is to sin. If a person has sinned, they can seek forgiveness of Allah. Allah will forgive them. But what is more important is, or what is worse, should I say, is when a person has sinned and they accuse someone else of the sin, or they accuse an innocent person of a sin that that person did not commit. In that particular case, you are doomed. Many of us are suffering today because we have soiled our mouths with that which is absolutely dirty and filthy regarding someone else that is not true. Maintain silence. Keep quiet. It's better for you. If you don't have something good to say, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, keep quiet. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhiri fal yakul khayran aw li yasmut. Whoever believes in Allah and the last day should only utter that which is upright and beneficial or remain silent. That's the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa It's amazing. 
If we are to follow this hadith, I promise you we will achieve contentment. How many of us lose sleep because of a statement we've uttered, because of perhaps something we've said on social media, and then we regret it? It's too late sometimes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Never ever accuse people, never ever uh, slander and falsely accuse those who are innocent of a sin because it will come back to haunt you. And that's what we are talking about, the lack of contentment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us contentment. Amin. The last verse that I'd like to speak about in this beautiful session is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about uh, resolving problems and matters. He speaks about marital discord and he speaks about how important it is to resolve marital discord. And then he tells us always remember that to resolve a problem is better than to break the marriage. Subhanallah. And to resolve problems with anyone, any member of the ummah is always the best thing to do. وَالصُّلْحُ khair, And indeed, resolving the matter is always better. Amazing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. It is difficult, that's why it is better. If it were easy, perhaps the reward wouldn't be so big. You know, when Allah tells you, if you do something, you will earn Jannah. That means that particular thing is probably very difficult to achieve. When you resolve problems, Allah says it's better for you. Your contentment, your happiness, long term, you don't know. Yes, it may be very difficult. I must declare my brothers and sisters that divorce is permissible, but as a last resort. The breakup of a relationship is permissible, but as a last resort, it is still better to resolve if you can. If you really cannot, then respectfully, respectfully, you may terminate a relationship. Respectfully, you may go your own ways, because in that particular way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect us and our offspring from that which is toxic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. Remember, when we separate, Perhaps if we do so respectfully, we will still achieve contentment. May Allah bless you all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Al-lazina amanu wa tatma'innu qulubuhum bi dhikri Allahi ala bi dhikri Allahi tatma'innu al-qulub.